I'm a huge fan of Zin watches. I've had a couple, like the 556i and the 910 Flyback. It's been a while since I've owned either, and I feel like I'm constantly on the verge of buying another Zin watch. And so I'm always looking and paying attention to their latest pieces. In 2021, when Zin debuted the 105 watches, I remember being very curious about these. The 2105 and the 2105 UTC pieces. These look like a new direction for Zin. In a lot of ways, they represent classic Zinn design, but in other ways, they're kind of a departure, and I wasn't sure how I'd feel about them once I saw them up close. But it wasn't until now that I finally had a chance to spend time with a 105, and that's thanks to my buddy Once Upon a Wrist Time. We're swapping watches for a week. I'm borrowing this, and he's borrowing my Cartier tank, so there's a chance I'll lose both a watch and a friend in just a few days. This hobby is a gift. The Zen 105 UTC uses a 41mm steel bead blasted case that's 11.9mm thick and takes a 20mm bracelet or straps. It has 200 meters of water resistance. Sized to my 7 inch wrist, it weighs 154 grams on the bracelet. And on this bracelet, the Zen 105 UTC lists for $2,150 and there are more affordable configurations on straps. Unlike some Zin watches, more expensive ones, this case is not treated with Zin's tegumented scratch-resistant technology. This case isn't, but the black bezel is, so that's cool. Meaning that the bezel is extremely resistant to dings and scuffs, unlike the wearer, at least this wearer. The 105 uses a case design that we've seen for years on different 100-level Zin watches. I mean, the watches that have the reference number that start with 100. These 100 level reference numbers seem to be all pilot watches, but so are the 300 watches, and the 600s, and the 700s, and the 800s. My point is, this case design isn't new, but I like seeing it with this matte finish. There have been a few Zin watches that use this same case, but with a fully polished finish, and I don't know, that's not my favorite. I don't think it fits here. At 11.9 millimeters thick, this is such a great size, and so is the 41 millimeter diameter. If 41mm concerns you at all, it really shouldn't. First, there are much more concerning things that you should be worried about, like rising sea levels, or missing the delivery of a watch even though you were home waiting for it, and they... did they knock? They didn't even knock. And second, this wears like a 40mm watch. If you're comfortable wearing a 40mm sports watch, this will be just great for you. You'll have no problem with the 105. The size looks good and feels good too. Like I said, the case is pretty slim, and the design of the lugs, it helps hug the wrist. The lugs hug. It's a lug hug. We love a good lug hug. I really like Zinn bracelets. This style specifically. It's known as the H-Link bracelet because the links resemble the letter Q. They're not fancy bracelets, and they're not new. In fact, I don't think Zinn has updated this style of bracelet in a long time. And you know what? It's fine. It doesn't need updating. At least, as long as the prices are around $2,000. But for a $4,000 watch like the new T50, yeah, Zinn should be offering a better clasp. The competition at $4,000 certainly is. But this one is totally capable. It's got three micro-adjustment spots and even a diver's extension for when you want to track a second time zone or a third time zone while underwater wearing a wetsuit. Whoever this is for, you're living a more interesting life than I am, I can tell you that. The UTC functionality of this watch is possible with the Salida SW330-2 GMT movement. UTC, GMT, same thing in this situation. The SW330-2 is a slight upgrade over the 330-1 movement. The most tangible improvement is the power reserve. This has 56 hours as opposed to closer to 40 hours. It's not a bad looking thing either. Zin logo on the rotor weight, blued screws, perlage, those are the little circles. And of course, I really like that the movement is visible through the sapphire case back. I'm a display back guy, yeah, even on a platinum Daytona. This is a collar GMT movement, or UTC movement. The orange UTC hand is independently set and the date is set with the same crown position, but by turning the crown in the opposite direction. The bezel has 24 positions and it really snaps into those positions. This bezel feels amazing. Maybe the snappiest GMT bezel I've ever tried, even snappier than my Rolex GMT. And the bezel is also a captive bezel. It's actually held on with screws for extra security, I guess. 
If I had a dollar for every time a GMT bezel accidentally popped off my watch, I'd be poor. Under the sapphire crystal, this dial and these hands, this is what I meant by what seemed like a departure when I first saw the 105 watches in 2021. I have not seen these hands and this marker style on a Zen watch before, but I'm not a Zen historian, a Zen historian, a Historia Zen. These hands are rounded and filled with loom and have metal surrounds. The UTC hand has no loom and is an unusual semi-skeletonized arrow. The placement of the date at 6 o'clock, I really, I always like that. I like the symmetry that that provides. It's uncommon for Zen designs, but there is precedent for it. I do find that this day display on the non-UTC version is a bit weird though. A day that's read vertically. These 105 designs are somehow friendlier and less aggressive than most Zen pilot watches. There's a post Bauhaus Dieter Rams kind of thing going on. And I know some people like it. In fact, this watch won a product design award from Red Dot, which is a German design prize company. But also, as far as I can tell, so did more than 2,000 other products that year. So eh, maybe not so prestigious. At around $2,000, there's a lot of competition for GMT watches. There didn't used to be, just 10 years ago, finding a watch of this quality with this complication, there just wasn't a lot to choose from. But now I can't even, I can't even scratch the surface, but I will try for you. You deserve a scratching. The Mito Ocean Star GMT costs $1,500. It has 200 meters of water resistance and a power reserve of 80 hours. It's also a flyer or traveler style GMT. The local hour hand is independently set. Zodiac makes a few Seawolf GMT watches on a bracelet. The simplest version costs about $1,700. It also has 200 meters of water resistance. Christopher Ward makes a bunch of GMT watches. My favorite is probably this Aquitaine that came out last year. It costs $1,600 and uses the same Salida SW330-2 movement that's in the Zin 105 UTC. And that's the same movement that's in the Manta SkyQuest. The SkyQuest is $2,400 and has an extra 100 meters of water resistance, so 300 meters in total, and nearly identical dimensions to the Zin. The Formex Reef GMT also has the 330-2 GMT movement and can be configured in literally dozens of ways. Most of the configurations are just under $2,000. And finally, there's always the Patek Philippe Calatrava Pilot Travel Time in white gold. Not a GMT watch, but in a pinch, I guess it'll do, maybe. I mean, if you have no other choice. This one runs about $60,000. And there are many, many more options. So why would someone choose the Zin over those other watches? Well, there's the design if you like how it looks and you like how it wears. But I think just as relevant, maybe even more relevant, is the brand. Zin has been making great watches for decades. It has a proven track record. It also has a legacy as a maker of tool watches. Over the years, Zin has built up respect and prestige amongst watch collectors. And I guess I'm one of those collectors because I'm always excited about their new pieces, which Hey, Zin, if you're watching, call me. Let's get more of your watches on this channel. I promise I'll be biased and irreverent and cringy.